Okay, look at me, gente. My name is Kevin, and welcome to Kev Does. You are going to embark on the most in-depth bike packing setup video series you're ever gonna see. This is one part of many videos, so if you haven't seen the videos up until now, make sure to go ahead and check those out, and then come here. When you're bike packing, things happen. Now, if you're in the middle of nowhere, you don't want to not be prepared in case something does happen to your bike. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Everything I brought to repair and maintain my bicycle while going through mountains for two weeks in Colorado on Wyoming. Let's watch. Starting off with my bike lubricant. Inside of a little baggie, I just had a rag and this finish line dry bike lubricant. I don't know how this compares to other ones. This is kind of the only one I've used. It's, it works great. Three spokes. I got from my local bike shop, they measured out and hopefully got them to fit. This is, I mean, you never know what's gonna happen out there and I don't wanna be riding on a gravel road on a mountain with a broken spoke. So these fit anywhere and it's always a good idea to have some extra spokes. Two, I had two extra tubes mounted on my frame. These fit inside my bike because you never know what's gonna happen with your tire. Just like you saw in one of my videos, I actually did need to put the tube in because there was a hole that just kept popping and kept, you know, leaking sealant and everything. So just stuffed the tube in there and finished the ride. Lock. This is, I think it's an Abus little combination lock. This is super small and you never know what town you're going into or what you're, when you're gonna need a lock. And I would highly recommend bringing something like this because it's not worth losing the thousands of dollars that you have stored on your bike packing setup just because you don't lock it up. Bike pump. This, this is one of those interesting things where this is not the most expensive pump in the world at all, but it's such a good bang for your buck. This is a little Schwinn pump that I got from Target or Walmart. This is actually my second one. The first one ended up breaking, but I spent years where this was my only pump. Pumping my bike up to 100 PSI when I just had a road bike, this got a little gravel and grime in it, but it has a gauge so you can see how much you're actually putting into it. It folds, so when you fold and then this comes out, so you have a little handle to push down on, and then this is on the ground, so you have something to push down that's solid against instead of trying to just do it with your hand. It fills up the tires really quick. It's under $30, whereas all the pumps now that I've seen, they're one, they're just hand pumps. They don't have a gauge. They don't allow you to push it against the ground. The little handle doesn't turn like this and they cost you know, $50, $60. So this is something, it also comes with a little mount for your bike. So I had it mounted right on my seat tube, I think that's called. I had it mounted right there on the bottom where you can, it doesn't bother anything. It, it gets out the way and it does a great job. So again, no complaints here. It's a fantastic pump, costs less than $30. I think it's like $22 or something for this. The only semi-complaint is this is not Presta off the gate and they give you this little like converter from Presta to whatever the bigger one, Schrader I think. But I also just bought one of the gas station or whatever that's metal, so because this is plastic and I just keep it screwed on to my wheels at all times. And that way that I can use this pump. But highly recommend this. It's cheap and it lasts and works really well. Next up, just a multi-tool that I found at Sierra. It seemed like it had a good amount of stuff. It was solid, everything is metal. So I bought it. It has more things than I know what to do with it, but it's worked great so far. Tom 110, there you go, Tom 18. Some orange seal tube sealant. You never know when you're gonna need some more sealant. Lezine, little bacon strip inserter. I bought this after John helped me with my punctures. We finally got into a town, I think this was in Colorado, or no, this was in Steamboat Springs, where there was a little bike shop, and I bought me one because I didn't want to need one and not have one. And this is tiny and takes up no space. A little wolf tooth tool. Now, this was cooler in in theory than I think it actually is. So it's a tire lever, right? So it helps you get the tire off and then spin it around. But this is metal, so it scrapes up your rim. 
it does have these little chain links that you can store in here that's a cool little thing but those can go literally anywhere and then this is something to help break your chain as well so maybe that's the main use of it and i just haven't had to break a chain yet but i don't know i kind of regret buying this i don't i don't really think i need it you can just use this pedro's tire lever i brought one and wrapped it with a ton of gorilla tape all right these are i figured it's nice to have two so one i can hook on the rim like with this little I mean, hook on a spoke and then I figured this would go around but once I started using this and it was metal and scraping up my wheel I stopped immediately but again you do have the chain breaker which is nice same day I bought the multi-tool I also bought this little co2 kit I don't really like it this as you can see I don't know what why this doesn't go down this you saw came off when I was taking it out the bike and it doesn't have like a regulator and I don't know there I've seen since I bought this things that are much smaller and do the same exact purpose and we're probably about the same price so get yourself one of these for sure if you have a tubeless setup but I wouldn't suggest this SKS one there are much better ones out there these little scabs patches I highly recommend these I highly recommend them. If you remember from the first video of this trip, the first night in Jackson, I found out that my sleeping pad had a hole and I forgot the patch kits for my sleeping pad, but then found this and actually used it and it lasted fine for the whole rest of the trip. And recently I also punctured a tube and before I threw it out, I was like, hold on, let me see if this would work. And it did. It's held up great so far. So I highly recommend these. It was like less than $5, but they work great. I think it comes with five or something patches. I don't know. It comes with more than enough patches than you need. And it costs nothing, but works fantastic. I don't know if I should include this in tools or where to put it in, but that's where it's going to go. Volet strap. This isn't by Volet, but it's the same exact concept. I was really confused with how these worked and why everyone was raving about them, but you simply put it through here and then the thing is what once it's tight around whatever you want, in theory, this should get this little thing through. Then no matter what you pull on, no matter how hard you pull, it holds. It's really strong and it's such a good idea. It takes up no space, but it's super versatile. So you can just tie it around something until you need it and then use them. But this is what held my chair up on my seat pack for the entire trip. As you can see, no real wear. It's just the little letters coming off, but no signs of this breaking at all, bending permanently or anything like that. These are great. All right, next is a little spoke tool, because if you did break a spoke, you want to be able to actually tighten them properly. So there's that. And then a valve core remover, because if you want to put some extra sealant in, it's nice to be able to just take out the valve and not completely unseat your tire. And it, it takes up no space at all. There you go, tool setup. Now what's been your worst mechanical while out on the trail? What tools did you use? And then how did you fix it? I'm really curious to learn, so go ahead and put that down in the comments below. Next video, we're gonna dive into the hygiene repair and maintenance for my body that I brought. We just talked about tools for my bike. Now we're gonna talk about my body, what we use to upkeep it and maintain it for two weeks while out on the trail. So make sure to stick around for that. If you haven't, go ahead and subscribe. There's gonna be a lot more helpful content just like this coming down in the future. And last, my patrons, I'm looking at you. Thank you. Thank you so much for deciding to support this channel. It means more to me than you can ever know. All right, team, let's move on to the next one.